pollination which results in the transfer of pollen to the stigma is of two types self pollination and cross pollination continuous self pollination or inbreeding throughout successive generations however is not desirable as it leads to inbreeding depression a condition characterized by a decrease in genetic vigor and vitality which results in reduced fitness in offspring in fact when genetically similar parents self pollinate the offspring are more likely to have genes in a homozygous condition moreover the recessive harmful or undesired alleles which otherwise would not have expressed themselves in heterozygous parents get expressed in the homozygous offspring such offspring with undesired traits also face the risk of being eliminated during the process of natural selection these undesirable traits include reduced pollen output decreased quantity and quality of seed production to name a few to counter inbreeding depression many flowering plants have developed several mechanisms called outbreeding devices that discourage self pollination and promote cross pollination these devices include dichogamy hakogamy self incompatibility pollen prepotency and unisexuality in dichogamy which is observed in bisexual flowers the anther and stigma of the flower mature at different times dichogamy is of two types protandry and protogyny in protandry which is observed in plants such as maize pollen is released before the stigma becomes receptive that is andrisium of the flower matures earlier than the gynesium whereas in protogyny which is observed in millet or bajra the gynesium matures prior to the andrisium that is the stigma becomes receptive long before the pollen is released in some plant species such as hibiscus the anther and stigma are placed at different heights which disallows self pollination by preventing the pollen from falling onto the stigma this condition is called hakogamy however other plant species such as passiflora have developed a genetic mechanism called self incompatibility or self sterility adept at preventing both autogamy and gynogamy self incompatibility prevents self pollen that is pollen from the same flower or different flowers born on the same plant from germinating or developing a pollen tube a move that prevents fertilization of the egg pollen prepotency is another mechanism that prevents self pollination in certain plants such as dolichus this mechanism allows the pollen from another plant of the same species to germinate earlier than the pollen of the same flower did you know that the production of unisexual flowers is also a mechanism developed to thwart self pollination in the case of monoecious plants such as coconut unisexual flowers prevent autogamy but not gynogamy however in the case of dioecious plants such as papaya unisexual flowers prevent both autogamy and gynogamy 
Interestingly, post pollination, the pollen and pistil start interacting with each other by releasing a series of chemicals. This interaction allows the pistil to recognize whether the pollen is the right or wrong type. The right type of pollen implies that the pollen belongs to the same species as that of the stigma. The wrong type, on the other hand, means that the pollen is self-incompatible or belongs to other plant species. The pistil rejects the wrong type of pollen by preventing it from germinating or disallowing the growth of the pollen tube. Conversely, if the pollen is of the right type, the pistil accepts the pollen and initiates post-pollination events. Post-pollination events include the germination of the pollen and the formation of the pollen tube which emerges through one of the germ pores. When the pollen tube starts growing through the stigma and moving towards the ovary, the generative cell in the case of a two-celled pollen grain divides mitotically to form the two male gametes. However, in a three-celled pollen grain, the pollen tube carries two male gametes from the point of germination. The pollen tube then grows through the style and advances towards the ovary, which contains the ovule. The pollen then makes its way through the micropyle, the entry point of the ovule, and pierces the filiform apparatus that guides its journey towards the synergid. All these events, from pollen deposition on the stigma until the pollen tube enters the ovule, are together referred to as pollen pistol interaction. The study of pollen pistil interaction has generated a lot of interest among breeders involved in artificial hybridization. A crop improvement program to produce commercially superior crops with desirable traits such as insect resistance. This is because the knowledge gained in this area has the potential to help breeders manipulate this interaction, including those of incompatible pollination, to get a desired hybrid plant. For instance, breeders know that for successful crossing, it is necessary to protect the stigma from unwanted pollen and expose it to the desired pollen. This is achieved through emasculation and bagging, two techniques developed for artificial hybridization. In emasculation, which is carried out in female plant-bearing bisexual flowers, a pair of forceps is used to remove the anther before it dehisses. Emasculation is followed by bagging, a technique where the emasculated flower is wrapped in a bag, usually made of butter paper, to prevent pollination by unwanted pollen. When the stigma of the bagged flower becomes receptive, it is dusted with mature pollen grains collected from the selected male parent. The flower is rebagged and left to produce fruits. In the case of female plant bearing unisexual flowers, emasculation is not needed. Instead, the female flower is bagged before it blooms. After the flower has bloomed and the stigma has become receptive, the desired pollen is dusted over the stigma before rebagging the flower. In this way, pollen pistil interaction allows the plant to recognize the pollen and promote its germination for fertilization to take place. Moreover, gaining knowledge in this field enables the growth of a superior variety of crops.